Good morning and welcome. I'm Lisa Stock. I'm the Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs here at College of DuPage, and it's my pleasure and honor to kick off the 2019 in-service activities for this year. And so uh, what I want to let you know is that we have a lot of exciting things planned for you, and we have, a, including a very special event this year, the investiture of Dr. Brian Caputo as our new college president. To begin today's ceremony, I would like to introduce to all of you Chairman of the Board of Trustees. Chairman Frank Napolitano attended Wheaton High, Central High School, the Technology Center of DuPage, and the College of DuPage. He recently received his Project Management Professional Certificate, the PMP, through the College of DuPage Continuing Education Business Solutions. The chairman works as a relationship manager at NCR Corporation. He previously served as a Bartlett Village trustee and as a U46 school board member. Please join me in welcoming Chairman Frank Napolitano to the podium. Good morning, and welcome to the investiture of the seventh president of the College of DuPage, Dr. Brian Caputo. On behalf of the entire Board of Trustees, today marks an important day in our history. I am truly grateful for our faculty, staff, and students, as well as special guests who have taken a moment to participate in today's official ceremony. I want to recognize a few of our uh, special guests that we here, have here today. State Representative Deanne Mazaki, County Board Representative Pete DeCiani, Brian Robb, representing Congressman Foster, DuPage County Board Member Tim Elliott, Mayor Richard Irvin from the City of Aurora, Glen Ellen Village President Diane McGinley, Glen Ellen Trustee Mark Senek, Dr. Lisa Freeman, President of Northern Illinois University, College of DuPage Trustees Vice Chairman Christine Fenney, Board Secretary Dan Markwell, Trustees Charles Bernstein, and Heidi Holen. College of DuPage... We got one more, two more. Um, College of DuPage President Emeritus, Hal Mackinich, and Sherman Neal, Chairman of the College of DuPage Foundation. Thank you all for joining us. We are honored to see you here this morning in College of DuPage is your community college. One other special guest we have here with us today is Brian Durham, who serves as the Executive Director of the Illinois Community College Board. Beginning his career in workforce development, he has provided leadership for and served as an administrator in adult education and family literacy, career and technical education, research and policy studies, and academic affairs. He has also managed the state's top-rated transfer system, the Illinois Articulation Initiative, and oversaw the implementation of transitional math pathways in the state. Dr. Durham currently serves on the Illinois Workforce Innovation Board and is the board liaison to the Illinois Community College presidents, among many other areas of service. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Durham to the stage. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, on behalf of um, my chairman, Dr. Lazaro Lopez, and the other members of the Community College Board. It's a real pleasure to be here. Real excited to have an opportunity to talk to you about a few things. I wanna thank you for having me on this historic day as Dr. Caputo is installed formally as the president of this great institution, institution and I wanna say congratulations to you, Dr. Caputo. Um, it's always exciting for me to be on campus at the beginning of a semester. I know you guys start on Monday. Um, it's important for me from the state and from Springfield um, to get out and see the buzz and feel the excitement as campus uh, life starts up again. And though you may have to stand in line longer at Starbucks to get your coffee, um, I know that you're all excited for the return of the students. It's a good reminder for me also for what I do. Um, I want to thank the Board of Trustees and the Chairman for inviting me to speak and to discuss Illinois' tremendous community college system. And I want to acknowledge the many community members, leaders, elected officials, and others that are here today. And finally, I want to acknowledge the terrific faculty here at the college. Because of your leadership in the classroom, the College of DuPage is a world-class institution of higher education. And you should be proud of the work that you do every day. Thank you. 
As I, as I considered my topic for my conversation with you today, it occurred to me that a new president provides an opportunity for an institution to explore its mission and to think about what is working and what can be done differently. And it also gives me an opportunity to remind you of what the community college system does well. With that in mind, I've kind of tailored my comments to consider a couple of trends, um, academic trends mostly, that I know the college is already thinking about, but I think it's really important that as an institution, um, you consider uh, thoroughly as these become and grow more in focus. Um, I'll, I'll finish with a brief couple of comments about my own vision in this context. But let me start first with a few facts about the community college system. I know you guys know the College of DuPage well, but let me tell you a little bit about the system. Um, over the past 10 years, 1.7 million Illinois workers enrolled in credit courses at a community college, and nearly 1.4 million enrolled in non-credit training. Community colleges actively collaborate with local communities and employers in the development of new programs targeted to meet local workforce demands. And I know that COD does this very well with your 259 certificate and degree programs um, just in the credit area, not to mention all the non-credit work that you do. During this past year, the Illinois Community Colleges served nearly 700,000 students in credit and non-credit training, and we are the third largest system in the United States. In this context, College of DuPage teaches about 52,000 of those students. Nearly two-thirds of all minorities in public higher education attend community colleges, 11,000 students with disabilities attend community colleges, and 38,000 students with limited English proficiency are served by community colleges each year in Illinois. Community colleges truly create access and provide the foundation for transition to further higher education, as well as meeting the needs of employers and job seekers across the state. Illinois community colleges truly are the engines for economic development in the state and in their respective communities. And that's certainly true here, as it is in many places, in all places where the community colleges serve around Illinois. Within this context, I see several trends emerging that community colleges need to contend with, adapt to, capitalize on, and otherwise be prepared for. Um, and many of you are gonna recognize these things that I'm gonna talk about. There is a blending of K-12 and two-year and four-year education and work that is occurring in higher education, um, and a historic blending in a, in a way that is different than it has been in the past. The linear nature of higher education is changing to one that overlaps, that swirls, and that engages students where they are based upon in their academic abilities and potential, not based upon their grade or their age. Let me give you a couple of examples. In developmental education, I know that College of DuPage has been tackling the idea of transitional math, that is allowing high school students to prepare for college courses in high school and avoid a placement test when they arrive. I also know that this has been a sticky conversation here at the College of DuPage and in other colleges across the state. But this is really the tip of the iceberg as it relates to changes in readiness for students and remediation. Other changes are coming as well. Just in this last General Assembly session, for example, there was a bill in the legislature to mandate co-requisite remediation as 100% of remedial instruction for community colleges and universities. And basically what co-rec means is that instead of a prereq, you take courses at the same time. You take your prerequisites and your credit courses together. And you do that with a lot of support, so they're alongside one another. This is a pretty significant change for community colleges, particularly those colleges that love their course sequences. And we know colleges love their course sequences. Um, the good news, the bill did not pass this year. What did pass was a task force that will be kicking off soon and I will be co-chairing that task force along with others, including Senator Pat McGuire, who's the chair of the Higher Education Committee in the Senate. Um, and we're gonna talk about the reform of remediation. There'll be higher education folks there, community college advocates, advocacy community, General Assembly members, faculty and administrators across two-year and four-year institutions. And, and I wanna tell you, this is not an ordinary task force. And when I say that, what I mean is, the bill was not sent to the task force to die. 
The bill was sent to the task force to work through some issues, but I guarantee you, as we go forward, there will be legislation that comes out of this work. There will be conversation about mandates around remediation. Um, and I don't know, frankly, where that's going to go. Um, but colleges need to be ready to respond to this changing landscape. Um, whether or not a bill comes out of that, and it's important to note, just because a task force recommends a bill, that doesn't mean, it'll pa doesn't mean it's going to pass. It's important to note that you have to think creatively about how you are working with students around their readiness. Um, and we have to tackle this problem or this issue or this challenge, however you want to see it, um, proactively and come up with innovative solutions. You know, the math folks um, in the community college system have done a great job through some of their work through preparatory math for general education. We've, all, we've done things like summer bridges, we've done boot camps, we've, we do a lot of really good work in the system around this, but there is more room to innovate and we have to think about it. <clears throat> Another area that I'll highlight, enrollment in dual credit has gone up every year over the past 10 years, every year. And if you know me, and I've worked with, with a number of folks in the audience here over the years, I've been talking about dual credit for a long time. And we are truly seeing an explosion of interest in dual credit. Dual credit has increased 18% since five years ago, 18%. Uh, community college system enrolled over 57,000 students, individual students, in dual credit, comprising 11.4% of total enrollment in the system um, this past year. Those students might take one dual credit course, or they might finish their degree before they graduate high school. So there's, though there are those 57,000 students, many of those students are taking multiple courses. Obviously, dual credit is substantial and growing. The Dual Credit Quality Act further mandates that community colleges offer dual credit when approached by a high school. When a college is approached, you are required by law to provide that dual credit. The same law provides an avenue for high school teachers to become qualified for dual credit and requires the state agencies to develop an endorsement for dual credit to go on a teacher's license. The challenge for you, community college folks, um, and particularly community college uh, faculty here, is we have to figure out how to capitalize on dual credit as a system. How do we use it as a recruitment tool? How do we use it to make sure that students in the high school come to the community college? Um, how do we better uh, approach dual credit as a system? Because it's not going anywhere, it's just growing. And this is not just a K-12 to community college phenomenon, this blending across systems. I've seen more interest in transfer in the last couple of years by the General Assembly and the advocacy community than over the course of my entire career at the Community College Board. You go back a couple of years and the General Assembly mandated that universities accept a general education package from II. And if you don't know what II is, it's a transfer agreement for, for 100 institutions in the state. Um, nonetheless, um, and we, by the way, we are national leaders in bachelor's degree completion rates among community college graduates. We are number one in the country, number one. But nonetheless, the General Assembly is asking state agencies to review the effectiveness of transfer in the state uh, because they want us to help figure out how to do it better. There's tremendous growth around apprenticeships on the horizon. Uh, apprenticeship is a cornerstone of the Trump administration's education agenda. It's having a trickle-down effect, um, a trickle-down impact on states, of course, because of that. Um, we at the ICCB recently received a $3.9 million federal grant to implement apprenticeships in the state. There's another one of those grants out there. There are numerous stakeholders that are engaged in work around apprenticeship. Apprenticeships are important to the Pritzker administration, and we expect more state and federal resources to be aimed here going forward. This blending, as I, as I call it, like to call it, is happening from K-12 to community colleges, to four-year institutions, and into work. Um, the linear model is changing in higher education. Apprenticeships, transfer, dual credit, remedial reform, transitional math, common placement requirements, et cetera, there is a plethora of work going on in this reform space. The linear model is being stretched. Colleges need to think about it, accept that it is happening, 
manage it and manage it to your advantage. I think there are great opportunities for retention and recruitment here um, as we, if we work to manage to our advantage. And I think, frankly, you ignore it or reject these things at your own peril. So I think it's really important that you consider these, these trends. Let me mention one other area. In an era of declining state funds, growing reform efforts, and questions about the public good of higher education, the need for fiscal stability and more self-reliance by colleges, and the ability to plan for the future will be paramount. It's imperative that colleges consider new and innovative ways to maintain fiscal stability without putting too much of that burden on students. I would argue that the answer lies with students, but not in their tuition increases, not in fee increases, rather in things like increasing retention, better recruitment, embedding of industry credentials to make programs more attractive, revitalization of non-credit opportunities for students, and customized training opportunities for employers. One of the ways that COD is doing this already is through implementation of guided pathways. Guided pathways is built on three principles. Uh, the first is that it's about the entire student experience. It's holistic in its approach if it's done correctly. Secondly, it's unifying. So all these different reforms can be built into a guided pathway strategy. And indeed, some areas that need more work in guided pathways could also be integrated pretty easily. Areas like the focus on hardest to serve students and other equity considerations in work. And third, Guided Pathways starts with a student's end goal in mind, engaging in a backward map for students. These are all important levers to keep more students on campus. As I see it, the main way in which campuses can ensure fiscal stability, particularly in an environment of declining enrollment, which we've been in some, for some time now. Of course, through COD's work in Guided Pathways, I hope that you all know this. From what I can tell, it's having an impact here at the College of DuPage. Over the past five years, Despite everything going on in the state and here in the district, COD has seen 20% increases in completions. 20%, that's great. And that's among the top of the colleges across Illinois. And certainly fiscal stability is easier with a budget. Over the past two years, Illinois higher education, as you all know, suffered a budget impasse that was nearly devastating, particularly to some of our less fortunate brethren. In this past year, we saw an increase of 5%, something everyone in Illinois higher education is excited about. Nonetheless, one lesson that is clear from this budget impasse is that colleges need to be more self-sufficient and think about innovative ways to maintain fiscal stability. Focusing more effort on students and student success in areas like retention is one of those ways. Uh, good leadership is critical in all this, and I know that with Dr. Caputo's background and experience here, uh, it's going to be vitally important, the, the experience that he has and can bring to this conversation. I'm often asked, and I'm almost done, I'm, I'm often asked my vision in this context. I've been with ICCB for 16 years. I've worked in every aspect of the agency. Uh, before that, I did some workforce development community college, but most of my career has been at the state at the community college board. So, as an aside, when people in my office say something's not in their job description, I can honestly say, you know, I used to do your job. You can't tell me that. <laughs> but I have been involved over those 16 years in nearly every academic effort across the system, every reform effort. Um, so I think I have an idea. I feel like I have an idea of what needs to be done. I mean, on the one hand, my vision is tied to the board's adopted goals, which I'll paraphrase quickly for you, smoothing the transition, contributing to economic development, and aligning our policies to improve student outcomes. I mean, that's the gist of what our board's goals are. And at the ICCB, since we've been there, we've made great strides in these areas. Uh, we've made great strides in redesigning remedial education, adopting common placement measures, We've enrolled thousands of students in dual credit courses, we've boosted our completion numbers, and we lead the nation, as I said, in bachelor's degree completion rates among community college graduates. And of course, we, this is the great thing about being at the state, I can take credit for all of your work. We at the ICCB haven't done any of this. You guys have, the community colleges have done this work. What we do at the state, what we do at our agency, is nudge, condole, man, cajole, mandate, incentivize, and otherwise work to convince you to adopt reforms and make positive changes, um, on top of our regulatory and financial role, of course. 
We've also fought, you may not believe this, if you, if you, um, you may not believe this, we have also fought efforts to infringe upon local control and faculty oversight of the curriculum, and sometimes we win and sometimes we don't. Overall, you can clap to that, I like that. <laughs> Overall, we, what we do is we try to clear a path so colleges can do these things that are best for students. So if anything were to sum up my vision, it's continue to do this, to clear the path for colleges so they can remain the most important and effective academic and workforce institutions in the state of Illinois. College of DuPage among them. So President Caputo, good luck to you as you tackle these tasks. You have a lot on your plate. I know you're up for the job. You have a brilliant faculty and students, dedicated staff, community supporters, and an excellent board to get you there. Meanwhile, in Springfield, we'll continue to try to clear a path for you. Thank you for having me, and I want to congratulate you again, Dr. Caputo, um, on your uh, movement into the president's job. So congratulations. And I want to ask the student body president, whose name I am not even going to pretend that I can pronounce, to be the next person to come up to speak to you. Thank you all for having me. My name is Uthman Kilger, President of Student Body President. <laughs> on behalf of the student body, I would like to congratulate you, Dr. Caputo, on your appointment to this prestigious position. I know that as a president, you will be approachable to the students because just two weeks ago, I approached you in the parking lot. At the time, we hadn't met yet, so I thought I would take the opportunity to introduce myself. Your positive attitude was very much appreciated, and even though you didn't know who I was in the beginning, you were still very generous. By the end of the conversation, I was extremely glad that I had taken the opportunity to introduce myself to you. I also want to include an observation. This is too low. <laughs> I also want to include an observation from our current SLC vice president, who was also a part of last year's officer team. She said that after you visited with the Student Leadership Council during the spring semester, that it was very much appreciated that you were a humble and open-minded person. And after the meeting, she said you followed up within a week on an issue that they brought up. So they were really impressed with your attentiveness and the way you made their issues a priority. I am extremely excited and grateful to work with you, Dr. Caputo, this, this year, and would just like to end by saying, from one president to another. <laughs> I love I know that with your energy, enthusiasm, focus on education, that we will reach the next level. Thank you. And now to bring Shannon Toller, President of Faculty Association, to the stage. Good morning. Um, it is my honor to represent the full-time faculty in extending our sincere congratulations to Dr. Brian Caputo as he takes on the role of president at College of DuPage. One of my first memories of Brian was actually not of Brian himself, but of discussions that, we were happening, that were happening in anticipation of his arrival back in 2017. There was a group of us lamenting about some paperwork and processes associated with making purchases and payments at COD. I see many knowing nods out there. Um, Diana Martinez, director of the MAC, was there. And she had worked with Brian at the city of Aurora. And she just looked at all of us in that meeting and said, wait, Brian is the guy who can fix this. And once Brian got here, I think many of us could immediately feel that sense of responsibility and service orientation that he brought with him to that job. And that felt really good. His attitude over the last couple years has reflected both a desire to grow um, and take care of our financial resources, but also use those resources to support the mission of this college. I am confident that he brings these same sensibilities to the office of the president. I think that now, two and a half years later, that sense of responsibility is even stronger. He has spent time getting to know our students, our faculty, our staff, and our administrative team. He's been very sincere about his commitment to COD and has engaged with us in a way that shows he wants to listen and learn. 
In the classroom, we know that teaching and learning are two sides of the same coin. You can't be a teacher if you aren't always learning too. I think the same is true of leadership, and the full-time faculty look forward to learning together with Dr. Caputo. Thank you. And now I would like to introduce my colleague, Cheryl Bombeck Kaplan, president of the COD Adjuncts Association. Thank you, good morning everyone. It has been an honor to get to know President Brian Caputo over the past year. He is a leader who seeks the opinion of all stakeholders and believes that every college employee and student deserves respect as important members of our community. In meetings and conversations with President Caputo, he has demonstrated a willingness to listen to the concerns of part-time faculty and to explore options not previously considered. Even as interim president, he began conversations with me and, and started working on some solutions and problems that had plagued us for a while. Coda is grateful that he has chosen to continue the recent tradition of an open door policy with the aim of enhancing transparency and teamwork. The Chinese philosopher Lao Tzu said, a leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. President Caputo has shown a humility that can be rare in leaders. I believe he truly wants what is best for the college, its students, its employees, and the community. By fostering communication, cooperation, and an uninhibited exchange of best practices and ideas, he will lead the College of DuPage into the spotlight to continue to fulfill its legacy as the best community college in the country. The light will shine on every student, faculty, and staff member, not on himself alone. On a personal note, Dr. Caputo is the first president who has given me his cell phone number, and I've tried hard not to take unfair advantage of it. <laughs> I and other CODO officers look forward to the upcoming academic year working with President Caputo to enhance the lives of our amazing students. Thank you. And now it is my pleasure to, to invite Rebecca Rivers to the stage. Um, and she is a career service specialist and a former adjunct. Good morning. Uh, my name is Rebecca Rivers, and I am a career uh, specialist in the Career Services Department. Today I'm here representing over 800 classified staff at College of DuPage as a member of the Classified Personnel Committee. Every day and night, Throughout all of our campus locations, classified staff are here for students, employees, and the public. We welcome new students, help them enroll, ensure faculty have what they need to do their jobs, provide a clean campus, support co-curricular activities, help students and community members find jobs, and many, many more essential functions of this school. Dr. Caputo, the Classified Personnel Committee, and all classified staff of COD welcome you to your new role as president. Already you have met with our classified staff representatives, uh, listened and thoughtfully considered our comments, ideas, and concerns. We really appreciate this strong start to our collaboration and look forward to continuing the hard work, not only to keep our college strong, but also to move it forward into the future. Our students are counting on all of us to provide the best service possible. And with your help, we can all commit to make sure that students are who stay the priority. It is with great pleasure and great expectations that classified staff welcome you, Dr. Caputo. We are educators, leaders, and dedicated employees who get things done. So together, we can accomplish our goals. Let's get started. And now I'd like to welcome our interim controller uh, to the podium, David Virgilio. Uh, my name is Dave Virgilio. I have been with the college for almost nine years. Uh, currently, I'm serving as the interim controller and a representative of the managerial employee group of about 130 people. On behalf of the managerial employee group, I would like to congratulate and welcome Dr. Caputo to his new role as president of College of DuPage. With the integrity and work ethic that Dr. Caputo brings to the table, we could not be more eager to continue to work with him to move forward the important student-focused initiatives that he is leading. In roles as leaders at College of DuPage, it is very important to us that the president embodies the mission, vision, and values of the college, and also that they are someone who is reasonable and approachable, formal but easy to work with. 
we certainly feel that Dr. Caputo fits this description. We very much look forward to many years of collaboration and are excited in what the future will bring. Again, Dr. Caputo, we offer our congratulations as you officially begin your first fall term as president. Finally, please welcome our interim dean of students, Dr. Natanya Montes. Good morning, board of trustees, fellow administrators, faculty, staff, community members, students, and good morning to you, Dr. Caputo. It is a great honor to stand before you on behalf of the College of DuPage administrators. Dr. Brian Caputo, please accept our congratulations on your investiture today. As a member of the Presidential Search Committee, we looked for a candidate who espoused the college's values of honesty, integrity, respect, and responsibility. We found that in Dr. Caputo. We also found someone whose dedication and loyalty to College of DuPage is beyond reproach. Finally, we found an individual who is committed to the college's mission of teaching and learning. John F. Kennedy once said, Leadership and learning are indispensable to each other, and Dr. Caputo provides a worthy example of this in action. From his listening sessions with the community, to his hot topic sessions, to his individual meetings with us as administrators, Dr. Caputo's desire to learn and understand all of the different areas of the college and what they do points to his dedication to developing strong, collaborative relationships. Dr. Caputo, we hope that under your leadership, the administration can be synonymous with collaboration and more importantly, with inclusion. In his book, The Light in the Heart, Roy T. Bennett wrote, good leaders have vision and inspire others to help them turn vision in real into reality. Great leaders create more leaders, not followers. Great leaders have vision, share vision, and inspire others to create their own. Dr. Caputo, the College of DuPage administration looks forward to learning and growing as leaders under your presidency. We hope you will rely on us as we will on you. College of DuPage is embarking upon a time of challenge and opportunity. We have much to do. Dr. Caputo, your stability helps to ground us. Through your initiatives, we can become a symbol of boldness, innov innovation, and the model for achieving student success in higher education. It is a new day. Congratulations, Dr. Caputo. We look forward to our partnership. Please welcome back to the podium Board Chairman Napolitano. Uh, my apologies to anybody that had any difficulties with the microphone. It seems to be working just fine for somebody vertically challenged such as myself. <laughs> So I, I feel for you and your, uh, your heights. Uh, good morning. <laughs> on behalf of the Board of Trustees, it is my distinct privilege to stand before you on this momentous occasion to celebrate the investiture of our seventh president at the College of DuPage. I am equally delighted to recognize each and every one of those of you are here today that works hard to make our institution the great place that it is, both now and for many years to come. I wholeheartedly believe in the profound talent that exists at the College of DuPage. Our expert faculty and staff are deeply committed to the transformative nature of higher education. Thank you for working together to strengthen our collective goal of student success. We are the College of DuPage. I would like to also acknowledge our outstanding presidential search committee, which is central in today's historic event. This remarkable committee comprised of a diverse array of industry leaders, in the private and nonprofit sectors, government, education, and much more, volunteered their time to provide their professional insights and experience to pursue the important charge of identifying a highly qualified individual to serve as president of the College of DuPage. This was not an easy task. Over the course of several months, the search committee shared invaluable perspectives to present the board with qualified candidates with keen leadership skills. Dr. Caputo was unanimously selected by the board as the best fit to serve as the seventh president of the College of DuPage and to help propel our campus forward by taking the College of DuPage to the next level. I invite the committee members to stand with us today and they are community leaders, John Coletti, Heidi Heisinga, 
Jeannie Ives, David Rogers, and college leaders, Board Vice Chairman Christine Fenney, Cheryl Bombeck Kaplan, David Virgilio, Natanya Montez, Linda Sands Van Kirk, and Shannon Toller. Those unable to join us today are Jennifer Butler, David, Sc David Fox, Dr. Scott Helton, and David Olson. Please join me in thanking this distinguished body of leaders for a job well done. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Dr. Caputo brings more than 35 years of relevant management and leadership experience to this great institution, drawing from a broad range of senior level executive positions in higher education, local government, and the military. In his most recent role as Vice President for Administrative Affairs and Chief Financial Officer here at the College of DuPage, Dr. Caputo has been integrally involved in developing key academic and career training programs, including guided pathways, Project Higher Ed, Innovation DuPage, as well as spearheading major financial transparency initiatives. With our new board in place and Dr. Caputo as our new president, I am proud to say we are already off to a phenomenal start. Today ushers in a new era at the College of DuPage and Dr. Caputo is ready to move us forward. Dr. Caputo will provide leadership that combines innovation, fiscal responsibility, and forward thinking in a way that uses all of our many resources to focus on student success. Dr. Caputo, trustees, speakers, please join me at the table for the administration of the oath. I state your name. I, Brian William Caputo. Having been duly appointed. Having been duly appointed. As the president of College of DuPage. As the president of College of DuPage. Community College District 502. Community College District 502. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will. That I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Faithfully discharge. Faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. In accordance with. In accordance with. The Illinois Community College Act. The Illinois Community College Act. And the mission and philosophy of the College of DuPage. And the mission and philosophy of the College of DuPage. Congratulations, Dr. Caputo. Thank you, sir. Good morning, and thank you all for coming. It is really great to see so many friends and familiar faces out there. I am honored to have the opportunity to serve as the seventh president of College of DuPage. For a very large portion of my adult life, I've looked upon this institution with admiration and affection. College of DuPage is a very special place. I'd like to thank the Board of Trustees for the trust and confidence that they have placed in me to lead this great institution. While I served as the college interim president, it became apparent to me that the Board of Trustees is completely dedicated to the college and the District 502 community that it serves. I am encouraged by a profound sense of purpose and keen focus that the trustees exhibit. Dr. Durham. I very much appreciate you making the trip from Springfield to be here this morning, and we appreciate all the work that you and the board do on behalf of community colleges in Illinois. I very much look forward to working with you. It has been a distinct pleasure getting to know our full-time and part-time faculty over the past two and a half years. Whether it has been working with you in guided pathways, visiting your classrooms, attending your events, or just chatting with you in the hallways, I have been so impressed by your skills, your passion for your work, and your commitment to our students. To the classified and managerial staff, without, without what you do, we can't do what we do across the institution. You take enormous pride in your work. The administrative and operational support that is necessary to make an institution of this size 
function well requires technical expertise, professionalism, and diligence. Quite frankly, you bring it all. While others may not see all that you do, please know that we genuinely appreciate the work that is done here by you. I feel blessed to have inherited a gifted core of administrators and cabinet officers of the college. I believe that we have the leadership skills to accomplish any task that confronts us. Thank you for your support, and I look forward to tackling the leadership challenge with you. Students are what this is all about. The prospect of helping our students achieve their dreams is what makes us eager to can come to work every day. Not only do we want to help our students reach their intended destinations, but we also want to know a bit of their life stories. We want them to engage in the life of the college. Personally, I have derived tremendous enjoyment out of watching our students do great things, whether it's in the classroom, on the performance stage, on the athletic fields, or even in forensics competition, Lauren, if you're out there. I marvel at their gifts and what they're able to accomplish. I would like to thank each and every one of the students for choosing College of DuPage to be part of their educational journey. I also appreciate the government officials, higher education colleagues, high school superintendents, and friends who took the time this morning to be here. Your presence means more to me than you know. I'd like to take the time also to thank my family for their support throughout my professional career. My wife, Karen, has seen me through three advanced degrees and a lot of long work hours. She's known me since I was 13 years old, so she definitely knew what she was getting into. <laughs> Karen, thank you for your love and support. While my father, William, is deceased, I must acknowledge him for his encouragement in my education. <clears throat> and teaching me some important leadership lessons. It is he who prompted me to uh, pursue admission to West Point. My mother is too ill to be here to the ceremony today, but I must express to her my appreciation for example of hard work and perseverance. The ladies always amaze me. As many... <laughs> As many of you may know, all three of our children attended College of DuPage affectionately dubbed by themselves as the Caputo Sib Squad, um, they are interestingly all very different. Brian Jr. on your left is probably the traditional um, college student who transferred to a four-year school. Katie is our student with artistic interests. Our younger boy, Greg, is mechanically inclined. Each one of them was well served by the College of DuPage. Brian Jr. Is, is an officer in the armed forces. Greg is a trades professional. And last but not least, Katie just graduated in May. <laughs> we are quite proud of the whole squad. And we are grateful for the great academic experience that College of DuPage provided for them. Now I'd like to talk a, a bit about where I think this institution should go um, over the next several years. The college is about to engage in the development of a new strategic plan. Having had the opportunity to lead the institution for the past seven months as the uh, interim president and president, and served as a senior administrator for the two years prior to that, it's apparent to me that a more focused plan is necessary. A plan that articulates our highest priorities. A plan in which every college administrator, faculty member, staff member, and can find his or her place. Having come to understand our environment, I propose this. Let's start with the centerpiece, student success. 
I believe that we should be an institution of exceptional student success in higher education. As I enjoy telling the story, I was walking through the halls last December and a faculty member stopped me and said, we're doing a lot of stuff around here, but what are we trying to accomplish? As I thought about it, I concluded that the professor was on to something. We, have, we had no real central idea unifying our efforts. In response, the cabinet came together in January to try to formulate, crystallize around what is our central focus. We wrestled with the issue at length. However, in the end, we concluded, isn't it student success trying to get the students where they want to go? Then we came to the final conclusion that that should be our main thing. So what does student success mean? We believe it has four dimensions. Persistence, completion, transfer, and employment. Persistence, this is facilitating the student's continued study until the ultimate goal is achieved from semester to semester, year to year, until they get where they're going. Completion, we want our students to complete all the requirements for one of our degrees or certificates if possible. That is, we want our students to have a credential in hand before they transfer to another, to another institution. We believe that completing a full program of study has value. At the same time, some students transfer to institutions before they get one of our degrees. For those students that do not complete a degree with us, we'd like to, to ensure that the transfer occurs as seamlessly as possible while maximizing the utility of the credits earned on our campus. With respect to employment, for those students who did not immediately continue their studies at another institution of higher education, we'd like to add value that permits them to obtain a job that suits their interests and their skills, or if they already have jobs, to obtain a better job to which they aspire. What are some of our targets? What I propose is this. While employment or enhanced employment is, a diff is difficult to track or compare to other institutions, solid information is available on persistence, completion, and transfer. We are doing really reasonably well on transfer. We, could do some, we really need more work on some of the other areas. The provost and his staff are developing targets for special populations, that is certain demographic groups, but we need global targets such as these. I believe we can be the top community college in Illinois across the aggregate of those three categories and be in the top 10% nationally. This is completely attainable. But how are we going to get there? Dr. Durham alluded to it a few minutes ago. I firmly believe that the Guided Pathways program is the vehicle to get us to these goals. The goals will become effective as soon as the major elements of Guided Pathways are in place and we are working on it. The faculty and staff of the college are well acquainted with the program. For, however, for those of you who are not direct members of our institutional team, I'll explain briefly. And Dr. Dr. Durham talked about this as well. Guided Pathways is a program that a number of institutions across the country have adopted to build capacity to design and implement structured academic and career programs for, for study, of study for students. This amounts to identifying the ultimate goal for an academic or career destination and then for each student fashioning a sequence of courses to get them there and providing supports along the way. We are on the way to implementing this impactful program. Let me tell you about some of the elements that we are working on. Mapping, navigators, and we are also working on the first year, uh, the first year experience platform course. Program maps address courses that are necessary to earn a degree or certificate at the College of DuPage and, if applicable, transfer to a university. In total, we must complete 700 maps. It's a heavy lift. To address all of the degree programs and our students' most frequent transfer institutions, so we look at five or so transfer institutions and try to get maps that will uh, lead students there. Significant progress has been made on these maps, but I would like to see us complete the maps entirely over the next two years, and this will keep us very busy. Counselors, program advisors, and the new position of navigators all play critical roles in the Pathways program. Count 
counselors and program advisors are involved in many aspects of educational planning. While counselors also offer additional supports uh, to students through career and personal counseling, there are times in which students may not be aware of these or other valuable resources that are available to them on our campus to help them succeed. To fill this gap, that is where navigators come in. Navigators closely monitor students through a case management approach to ensure that they are staying on track to complete their programs of study and identify situations where intervention is necessary. When other college services could potentially be helpful, it's the navigators that are a primary staff member to make a referral. During 2019-2020 academic year, we hired 13 navigators. This year, we expect to hire 14 more. In the next year, we plan to complete the formation of the Corps of Navigators with the hiring of 12 to 15 more uh, navigators. Now the first year experience. Currently, we offer a course that assists new students in tra transitioning to higher education by providing an introduction to the academic success skills necessary to meeting the challenge of, college, of a college education. In our pathways we work, we refer to this as the first year experience course. However, we are reevaluating this course with an eye toward more impactful programming for first year students. While enrollment in the course is voluntary, we are investigating various experiences that will better support the transition and, and success of our first year students. There are a couple of other uh, programs that I'd like to talk about briefly that also support student success. One of these is um, a bit of a new one, which I'd, I'd like to introduce in the coming, not this, but the next academic year. There are, great, there are many great minds doing great work on this campus with respect to teaching. I'd like to further promote innovation and pedagogy on our campus so as to continuously inspire faculty to explore new techniques that in the end could very well advance student learning. A clear example is of this initiative that I'd like to encourage is the Enhanced STEM Instructional Classroom Project that I'll talk about more in just a minute. To spur more work of this type, I'll be proposing the inclusion of a provision in the 2020-2021 budget for faculty ex explore innovation and pedagogy, which we will call for now the Academic Innovation Program. I've asked the provost to develop detailed parameters for the program. Please stay tuned, there's more to come. The popular media often talk about the need in the marketplace for individuals with STEM skills. In February, the board chairman, our director of legislative relations, and I visited federal legislators and their staffs in Washington, DC. Conversations during that trip confirmed what we already understood. That is that skills in the sciences, technology, engineering, and mathematics are in high demand. Our STEM faculty have always done a fabulous job preparing our students for work and further study in STEM fields. However, we can empower them more. The college's fiscal year 2019-2020 budget, that's this year's budget, includes $300,000 for the creation of three enhanced STEM classrooms on the third floor of the Berg Instructional Center. These classrooms will feature 270 degree active learning technology, augmented reality and virtual reality technologies, and all of these technologies will elevate STEM teaching and learning experiences. We expect these classrooms to be ready by next summer. The enhanced STEM classroom, enhanced uh, STEM instructional classrooms provide essentially a pivotal, or essentially a, a, a pilot endeavor for us. We are exploring the possibility of taking our STEM education to the next level. That is by creating a dedicated STEM building. Our facilities master plan calls for the construction of such a building. The building would include a digital virtualization theater that is, that is a DBT or dome and a number of active learning classrooms similar to those that we're adding in the BIC. Astronomy professor Joe Del Santo, STEM Dean Jennifer Cumston and I recently visited the University of Notre Dame where we saw the power of a DVT in terms of instruction. Also, Assistant Provost for Instruction Kirk Overstreet, Social and Behavioral Sciences Dean Mary Ann Honeycutt, and Professor Del Santo came to appreciate the value of the active learning classrooms during a visit to Richland Community College earlier this year. 
We are excited by the possibilities of advancing the learning experience on our campus. We estimate that the cost of a STEM building would likely be in the neighborhood of 55 to $60 million. We have space on the west side of the campus for such a building. Also, happily, we have a potential source for about a third of the funds for the building. The state of Illinois recently appropriated $20 million for the construction of buildings on the west side of campus. And Dr. Durham has absolutely promised that the money will come through. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the balance of the funds necessary um, could come from other sources to include on-hand resources, referendum bonds, and philanthropy through the assistance of the College of DuPage Foundation. The benefits of a DVT in the active learning classrooms would extend beyond the instruction in, instruction in the STEM fields. Professors in the liberal arts, social and behavioral sciences, and other, other uh, fields would find new and exciting methods of delivering courses through these facilities. Their inclusion in this endeavor is entirely appropriate as our students need a well-rounded education that includes expansive and rigorous study in the humanities and others non-STEM fields to be enlightened individuals that will serve society well. While student success is our main thing, uh, we have, as we call it, there are two other strategic goals that I believe are appropriate for the college. One relates to art and culture. I believe that we should, be, we should become the widely recognized center for art and culture in the western Chicago suburbs. MAC Director uh, Diana Martinez and her staff have done a superb job developing an annual calendar of outstanding events showcasing the performing arts. Yet we now know we have the opportunity to make an even bigger mark. We can distinguish ourselves as a preeminent purveyor of the visual arts. This will permit us to serve District 502 community, the District 502 community better. To find the best art and culture, one will not need to travel down to downtown Chicago. Our residents, our residents will be able to find it right here in Glen Allen at the College of DuPage. A strong emphasis on art and culture will also support our educational mission and our primary strategic goal of becoming an institution of exceptional student success in higher education. We could not be more excited that the art of Frida Kahlo is coming to our campus next summer. The work of this renowned Mexican artist will be on display on the other side of the Mac Atrium for three months in 2020. Through her works, Frida explored a range of contemporary issues such as the imp and with such impact that she became an icon for feminism, activism, and, and Mexican heritage. The exhibition will include 26 original works worth over $100 million, as well as 150 digital Im images and an exquisitely designed poetry garden. The exhibit itself will be supplemented by a year of wraparound events educational programs, and festivals. I must encourage each, encourage each of you to attend the kickoff event of the, for the exhibition on September 8th, starting at 1 p.m. here in the MAC. The Calo ex exhibition will be a major event in the history of the college, but we want the Calo event to be just the beginning. In subsequent years, we want to bring many more such events of world-class caliber to this campus. We cannot accommodate an artistic event on the scale of the Callow exhibit without modifying the Cleve Carney Gallery across the atrium. I should say that now called the Cleve, Cal Cleve Carney Museum of Art, as we've renamed it. We must upgrade the security and the environmental features of the museum to protect the art. Also, we are in the process of expanding the space of the museum by 1,000 square feet to the north. And what you see in this picture, um, on, on to the right side of the picture, is a depiction of Frida. Uh, and that is the part that will enclose the new space. The, ex the expansion will permit us to offer a better viewer experience. The cost of the expansion will be approximately $2.8 million. I believe this is a wise investment in our institution 
and I thank the Board of Trustees for their vision in this regard. Not only will the expansion enable us to better present the Callow pieces, but it will also position us to show off our permanent connection collection that is now in storage because of lack of space. I must add that our facility's master plan contemplates another expansion of the museum to the west. This expansion would double the size of the museum. I believe that we should pursue this expansion over the next few years to further advance our capacity to accommodate future world-class art exhibits. My experience during my interim presidency showed me that the District 502 community looks to the College of DuPage to be a thought leader, to be responsive to community needs, and to meet needs that are beyond the scope of traditional higher education. Our continuing education division under the leadership of Vice President Joe Cassidy has always sought to satisfy non-traditional educational needs. However, the community, its leaders, and the marketplace have called us to do more. And we are responding. Indeed, we are seeking to, to serve DuPage County by being a major engine of economic development. That would be our third proposed strategic goal. This role not only works for the benefit of the marketplace, but it also provides opportunities for growth and employment for our students. Thus, it aligns well with the first goal of, of student success. Innovation DuPage and Project Higher Ed are the two primary vehicles we will use to promote regional economic development. In May, we celebrated the opening of Innovation to Page, or ID as some of us call it, in a completely renovated 8,500 square foot section of the Glen Ellen Civic Center. ID is a business incubator, accelerator, training facility that has the capacity to grow business in our county. The venture arose out of a, the college's collaborative efforts with the County of DuPage, the Village of Glen Ellen, other governmental entities, institutions of higher education, and a variety of business partners. During this academic year, our objective is to incubate 50 new businesses, accelerate 30 maturing businesses, and train 1,600 new business clients. While ambitious, I believe that we can accomplish these objectives and begin to see ID make the major contribution to, to DuPage's economy that will continue for years to come. It seems that at least a few times each week, I read an article about a gap in the marketplace between the skills that employers need to operate their businesses and the available labor pool. In fact, the worst workforce development was, was one of the other two issues on which our federal legislators solicited our input when we visited last February. Project Higher Ed is our response to that call. The initiative is an earn while you learn program. The program participants are employees of District 502 businesses who also complete supporting job-related courses with us. The students are paid a wage for their work by the sponsoring businesses, and the businesses pay for most of the cost of the students' studies. The first group of eight students recently started the program. This first group has come from the manufacturing sector. In the next 12 months, we expect to enroll students from five more manufacturing employers, but the program is adaptable to other business sectors. We are preparing to a version of the, of the program for at least one business outside of manufacturing by June of 2020. In concepts, the goals I've outlined here are relatively straightforward. However, those of us inside the institution know that there are many challenges inherent in each of them. Yet at this moment, I see the unmistakable potential in this institution to achieve these goals. We have a sincere and supportive Board of Trustees, and our faculty and staff are talented and passionate. All we need is focus and the commitment of everyone here today, and we will get there. I have complete faith in you. I look forward to embarking upon this incredible journey together and I pledge to you that I will give you my very best. Thank you for attending today's ceremony. Your support means a great deal to me.